Hello YouTube! Okay, so this is just going to be a very quick tip tutorial about how I handle drawing perspective in Paint Tool Sci. So before I start, this isn't a true perspective grid or a true perspective ruler like you can get in a lot of programs because um, Sci doesn't really have that function, um, but it is a good way to sort of hack and do something similar to that function without actually having that as part of the program. It is also more useful than just drawing perspective lines onto your canvas because um, those can't really easily track a um, vanishing point that's off your canvas. You just kind of have to eyeball that, whereas this keeps a lot better track of those. So yeah, um, first I'm going to start with just a rough sketch. Um, you don't necessarily need to do this, but I find it a lot easier to decide where my vanishing points are going if I know sort of roughly what I'm drawing underneath. So you can just eyeball this. Um, I should probably do something slightly more interesting than just a box. Uh, three boxes. That's more interesting. Um, yeah, and I just eyeball the perspective on this without actually having any guidelines. I can see kind of roughly where they're vanishing to and I want them to vanish sort of somewhere up there-ish. Okay, and I don't really want to figure out exactly where they're supposed to go on my canvas, so I'm going to start adding my grid. So I'm going to be using Paint Tool Size line work function. Um, it's right here, it's right next to making a regular new layer. You're going to use this one, the new line work layer button. Um, Paint Tool Size line work layers are basically vector layers, so instead of filling in pixels, you're assigning a start point and an end point to a line, and then if you want to, you can assign sort of a curve to the line, and it makes the lines very easy to manipulate without losing any part of them. So you don't really need to know how vectors work to use these, you just basically need to follow these steps. So first off, I'm going to switch to the line function, and I've switched my color out to something different from my sketch. I just use this hot pink because I happen to have it available. You can use basically whatever you want. I do recommend using a different color than you use for your sketch layers, just because it'll be easier to tell the ruler apart later. Okay, so with the line tool, I'm going to start by drawing some lines that are sort of roughly in perspective. So I'm going to click on the start point, move to the end of where I want my line, and then click again and I finish the line. I'm just going to make another little line across and then move roughly back up to where I began. So down, click, cross, click, up, click, down, click, cross, click, up, click, down, click, etc. Um, you can make basically as many lines as you want. I usually go for maybe a dozen-ish. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's probably fine for this. Um, the more you have, the um, easier it'll be to create really, really complicated things. Um, and you don't need to be exact about where you're placing things, I've just put them kind of at random because we're going to fix that up next. So once you've got roughly enough lines, you're going to switch to your edit tool, which is just over here, and make sure it's on translate. And now that we're in edit mode, you can see these little anchor points at the end of these lines we've created. And as soon as I click on an anchor point while I'm holding it down, I can drag that anchor basically wherever I want. So now is when I'm going to start being precise. I'm going to take all these anchor points up here that are supposed to be my vanishing point, and I'm going to line them all up so they're in more or less the same place. I just kind of eyeball it because I don't really care if my perspective is exact for most of the drawings I'm doing, but if you wanted to, you could zoom right in and be even more careful about getting them all into the exact same place. And then once you've got all those lined up, you can take these sort of guide work things and you can line those up with your sketch. It's going to be kind of the bottom of that box, it's going to be the top of that one, it's going to be kind of the top of that one. As you can see, my sketch is super off, but that's okay. Once you're happy with where they are, I'm just going to turn off or reduce the opacity of my lower layer, and I'm going to reduce the opacity of my line work layer, make a new layer over top, and now I can do a new sketch. So I'm going to follow my perspective lines in the background here. And I'm lining that one up with that. And it's getting lined up with 
that. If you come to a point where you either want to add more detail or you've forgotten to line up a grid, you can just switch back to your line work layer, move one of your guides into the new position, and go back to your sketch layer and keep going. So, going to move that up a little, move that to the side. This will just be a long skinny box now. And that's basically it. So now I've got some boxes that are more or less following one point perspective. Um, you can use the same tool to do two or three point perspective if you want. I like to make a different layer for every point I'm using. So let's do one. Let's do one point perspective that's going to be vanishing off to the side. Oops line work layer. So basically what I'll do for two-point perspective is I'll make one of these lines straight across so that can be the horizon line. And then I'm going to go ahead and make a second line work layer and I'm going to change the color of my brush so I can keep the two layers apart. And then I'm going to make some new lines and I'm going to make one of them line up with that horizon line. And now when I'm going to edit, I can just make sure those horizon lines are identical. So I've got it reflected on both layers. Drag that one to wherever I want my second vanishing point to be. And line everything up with that. And then just like before, you can reduce the opacity if you need to. And make a layer over top. And quickly and easily sketch things in in two-point perspective. You can, I think, do both points on the same layer if you find that easier. I just tend to get a little muddled up with where I've put all of my um, which lines are which, so I just find it a lot easier to um, make things as two separate layers for two separate points. And there you go. Um, and then it would just be the same thing if you want to add a third point for three point perspective, you could just add that in, you just wouldn't have to do the horizon line thing again. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's about it. Uh, I hope this was helpful to some of you guys working in Paint Tool Sci. This is one of those tricks I sort of figured out on my own and it made myself a lot easier afterwards. So I really hope it helps you guys out too. Um, I, if you'd like to see me actually using this trick to do something other than random boxes, I'll link to a couple of videos down below where this is something that I actually use. And um, yeah, if you've got any questions about it, just uh, leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching guys, and I hope I'll see you in some of my other videos.